Hi, I'm Greg Dell here with attorney Cesar Gavidia. And Cesar, this is a case we're going to discuss that recently just came out of the District of Massachusetts against Prudential. Um, kind of the typical nonsense that we've been seeing with Prudential, but this one was, I found especially offensive since it deals with cognitive impairments, and cognitive impairments appear to be um, what we see in a lot of claims and very significant. So let's talk a little bit about the facts of this case and sure. what we can learn from this case to benefit you know, people watching our videos and clients and future clients as well. Yeah, sure. So um, like you said, we see these types of cognitive case, um, cases a lot. And in this particular case, uh, it comes out of, as you said, the District of, Ma of Massachusetts, U.S. District Court in Massachusetts, and involved uh, James Ampey, who was a uh, testing and development engineer for MIT Lincoln Laboratories. And he suffered a head injury in 2011 and had some decline in performance over time, had taken some FMLA leave. And then in 2014, uh, after a bad performance review, he was kind of influenced to file for disability, which he did with their disability insurer Prudential. Uh, after following with Prudential, they came back and declined the claim. He was claiming that he had cognitive deficiencies, cognitive decline, problems in his thought processes and executive functioning that impaired basically his ability to function at a high, in his high level occupation as a development engineer. And we often see, you know, just looking at the background 2011, that clients call us and say, look, I've been trying to work through this issue. Yeah for a couple of years and now I'm getting bad reviews or my employer's kind of sticking with me but they know about it. But right. often we'll see the carrier say, well you worked with it for so many years, what got so bad? Yeah. So just a, good to see the facts here that someone said, hey, I worked through it for three yeah, years exactly. and then went out. Right. And, I, and I often tell my clients, you know, and they get concerned, oh I was off and on work and I say, you know, it actually shows that it's a, you're very credible in the sense that you've tried to work, you've tried to push through it. And ultimately, it began, it began to impact your performance at work to where your employer even started to notice. And he's, they're recommending that you file for disability. That's what this disability insurance is for. That's why they have it. Right. So and that's the, what this guy did. That's exactly what he did. In the case of Mr. Ampey, Prudential declined the claim and claimed essentially that he's claiming these cognitive deficiencies, this, these executive function problems. But there's really no testing in the medical evidence that he submitted or in the medical records that shows that his uh, complaints are valid. Okay, so what he did basically at the suggestion of Prudential was he went out and obtained a neuropsychological examination. It's interesting that Prudential actually didn't submit him for one because we've often seen that. They usually hire some, you know, third party vendor to find a neuropsychologist who's insurance company friendly and they send them to one. But he went out and obtained a neuropsychological exam on his own with validity testing. When he submitted it back to Prudential, they said, oh, they submitted it to their, you know, doctor who reviewed the, the testing results and he says, oh, well, although it had validity testing, the science and the testing was outdated based on current protocol, based on the current literature. So it's what we often see, that whole moving target strategy employed by disability insurers and the experts that they hire. You go out and obtain the evidence that they say you should have, and they just move the target down the road. This, um, so he did the first, he got the uh, neuropsych exam, then he, did an, he got denied, then he did an appeal, and then what happened? So they declined it again, um, and after that they filed suit in federal court. And the federal court awarded Mr. Ampey his disability benefits found in, against Prudential on the basis that they had one skeptical doctor just calling out the results of the neuropsych exam for, real no, for really no valid reason. He had, there were specialists that he had on his side, his doctors, his treating physicians, all concluded that he has post-concussion syndrome, that the, this was the cause of his disability. But yet Prudential decided to go with their doctor, weigh their doctor more favorably than any of his doctors in all of the medical evidence, and for that reason, they found against him. What's interesting in this case is that against ERISA, you know, the ERISA guidelines and the ERISA, and ERISA rules, they used the same neuropsychologist on both the initial review of the claim and the subsequent appeal. So they didn't even use a, a different physician as they're required to do, someone who's separate and apart from the original decision to do the full and fair review, so to speak. Right, and this wasn't a case that our law firm handled, but we still talk about it because we track every case around the country. We right. don't know 
how much of an impact or if that was argued by the plaintiff's attorney to say that the claimant had an unreasonable review. Um, but yeah, the law is that they're supposed to use a different medical professional. Now, another thing that I think was key here was that this claimant was approved for Social Security Disability. And um, not sure how much weight Prudential put into that in reviewing the claim. Yeah, when I reviewed the case, um, it was very clear that they did not really give any consideration or weight as is required to the Social Security Administration decision. Right. It's not very common that you see someone awarded at the initial application. And that was, that's what was done here by the Social Security Administration. And the court actually had taken issue with the fact that Prudential, unlike the Social Security Administration, did not consider any of his occupational duties. In other words, the restrictions and limitations and how they applied specifically to his occupation as a development engineer. Social Security Administration did that. Right. So really all they did was they see the opinion coming from their doctor and they just went with it. They didn't really give consideration to anything else. Right, and as all their doctor did was try to pick apart the um, neuropsych report of the, of the claimant, which is kind of crazy when someone has cognitive impairment and they're claiming uh, maybe associated depression or anxiety, how they can do that by just looking at the paper but then saying, no, everything that doctor said isn't really true or the testing isn't valid so right. we're not going to consider it. And, and this just goes to show you that an insurance company can basically find any doctor to say absolutely anything about any test or anything that you submit on behalf of your disability insurance claim. Right. It's um, sad, but you know, luckily this, you know, they can try to play games and try to strong arm the plaintiff, but at the end of the day, this is a case where the plaintiff prevailed, um, which is great. Um, if you have a claim with Prudential or any long-term disability insurance company, feel free to give Caesar a call or any of our long-term disability insurance attorneys. We represent clients all over the country and we always offer a free immediate phone consultation. We look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.